Hello everyone. This video is first in a series of three videos wherein I will discuss the examination pertaining to the respiratory system of a child. In this video, we will discuss the anatomy and the surface landmarks related to the respiratory system. We assume the consent has been taken and the patient has been explained regarding the examination procedure to be done. Take universal precautions including the respiratory precautions and hand hygiene. This is trachea and this is the angle of Louis. A prominent landmark which can be felt as a transverse ridge as you move caudally from the top of the suprasternal notch, also called the sternal angle. It is the junction of the body of the sternum and the manubrium sterni. The bifurcation of the trachea corresponds on the anterior chest wall with the sternal angle and posteriorly with the disc between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebra. The ribs are most easily counted downwards from the second costal cartilage which articulates with the sternum at the extremity of the sternal angle. Thoracic areas are divided anteriorly into supraclavicular region which is the space just above the clavicle, the infraclavicular region which is the space just below the clavicle, memory and inframemory. Laterally it is divided into axillary and infraaxillary regions and posteriorly it is divided into suprascapular the space just above the scapula, the interscapular, the space just between the scapula and infrascapular, the space below the scapula. Let us now look at the thoracic lines. This is the mid sternal line, which is a vertical line passing through the middle of the sternum. And this is the parasternal line, which is a vertical line along the lateral edge of the sternum. This is the mid clavicular line a vertical line through the middle of the clavicle. This is accurately drawn by determining the midpoint between the acromial process and the midsternal line and drawing a vertical line through this point. This is the anterior axillary line and this is a vertical line along the anterior axillary fold. This is the posterior axillary line, a vertical line along the posterior axillary fold. This is mid axillary line a vertical line midpoint between the anterior and posterior axillary lines and this is the vertebral line a vertical line over the spinous processes in the midline now let us look at the surface landmarks pertaining to the lungs the right lung corresponds to a line starting about one inch above the medial one third of the clavicle and descends behind the sternoclavicular joint it touches the right parasternal line at the angle of Louis and then passes vertically downwards to the 6th costal cartilage and then to the 6th rib in the mid clavicular line, 8th rib in the mid axillary line, 10th rib posteriorly and then to the 10th thoracic vertebra and then upwards. The left lung on the other hand proceeds same as the right side till the 4th costal cartilage and then follows the outer margin of the heart to the 6th rib in mid clavicular line and then follows the same course as the right lung subsequently. Now let us look at the surface markings of the fissures and lobes. The oblique also called the major fissure corresponds to a line passing through the sixth rib in mid clavicular line and the fifth rib in the mid axillary line till the second thoracic spine. Now this corresponds to the upper border of the lower lobe. The surface markings on both the sides are similar as far as the oblique fissure is concerned. The transverse fissure is also called the horizontal fissure or the minor fissure. On the right side it is drawn by joining a horizontal line from the fourth costal cart cartilage anteriorly to meet the oblique fissure at the fifth rib in mid axillary line. If we look at the back of the patient it mostly represents the lower lobe and it is only in the upper back that the upper lobe is represented. Now if you look at the patient anteriorly, the middle and the upper lobes are predominantly represented on the right side. On the left side, mainly the upper lobe is represented. And if you look laterally, it represents more or less all the lobes. The lung lobes can be visualized as two wedges fitting together and not as cubes piled on top of each other. Thank you for watching.